Now, Fujera is, uh, it's got a big anchorage over there and um, I've said that there's about 250 boats on anchor there. Um, and uh, basically holding, uh, holding its, its gas ships and oil ships that's holding, hold, like holding vessels for example. And um, they stay, they've stayed there, I've been here for two years and those ships have been, been there for two years already, you know. That at the time that I've been here and I don't know how long before that. Fujairah is one of seven emirates that make up the United Arab Emirates um, and it's the only one of the seven that has a coastline solely on the Gulf of Oman and none on the Persian Gulf. It truly is an epic sight to see all these gigantic ships anchored as far as the eye can see. Um, it's a very, very, very special fishing spot and we had it epic. It's kind of different, something I've never done before, but we, there's just these hundreds of ships that are actually anchored all around here and it's, we're kind of just going into the side of the ship from where the, so that the sun's shining onto, onto that side and we're just drifting down and, and throwing and there's, we had a couple of drifts and there was nothing and we were all kind of quiet, I think we were wondering how this is all going to operate, but we eventually got to this one ship and um, yeah, we had a, a lot of action. We had some dolly action, um, a couple of little bunnies, and uh, then um, yeah, I got, I got in a sick little elephant tuna. It was quite amazing to to experience what we saw there. I mean, something between 250 and 350 ships that are at anchor there at any given point in time, and there's there's generally a bit of movement. But I'm told some of them have been there for two years. Um, what we learnt was really amazing. It soon became obvious that the bigger the vessel, uh, the more it would hold uh, in terms of number of fish and the more laden it was, in other words the lower it sat in the water, uh, the more fish there would be on it, especially your, your sort of your gliding fish. If you look at those yellowfin tuna with the big pecs, they love to ride kind of the bow wave on a ship, um, the, the front end of a reef when there's a current, and that's exactly what was happening there. As soon as the current became stronger, the fish were, be were becoming more concentrated on the bow of the ship, and they just kind of surfing that that current, like birds would ride a thermal, um, like you see the the, the yellowbill kites at Vidal just gliding on that on that onshore wind as it hits the coastal dunes, and that's exactly what was happening on those ships. So you can quite quickly pick up on that and then start looking for those kind of vessels. And if we went back there again, um, I, I'd definitely be looking for the big ships that are full, and preferably if they've been there for a while. Oh, okay, got it.
Yeah, I think the the thing that was that that really sort of um, got to me was when I say got to me, just just looking at the at the number of vessels that were out there and the volume of fish that there has to be was just a bit of a mind blow. I mean, there, there must be an incredible amount of fish out there. And uh, it's something that, that's nice to, it would be nice to share with people, um, especially people that, that you kind of know that, that would love to experience that. And, and that's the part that I think sort of stuck in my mind the most. Um, it would be nice to, to take people there that can really appreciate that kind of experience. Absolutely crazy, the fish just come in and charge the plug. 
Yeah, this every every boat that we get to, every ship, just the fish seem to just be thicker and thicker. This one, as soon as I threw, they came jumping from all angles and just there must have been 20 fish all around my plug at once. But uh, we haven't seen the big one that we saw earlier, and that's the one I think that we'd really like to catch. Yeah, I think you know I, that that for me was was very special. Um, it's it's a fish that that's always been there um, in in my in my dreams. Um, I've I've often thought about Dorado, um, and to catch a, a really big male like that, and to notice how that forehead actually even starts protruding forward um, was amazing. And to catch it on that light tackle, yeah, was was great. It was it was unbelievable. From a strength point of view, that fish just went on and on and on and on. And every time you think you're coming close, he just dives down again, pretty much like the sailfish, marlin, tuna, that kind of thing. They definitely use the current a lot. And uh, we saw a lot of big bulls. And uh, and I think the cast before that, I'd hooked another one that might even have been a little bit bigger. And I was very disappointed when it came unstuck because you know that this is an experience in a lifetime and you may never ever have that opportunity again. So to get a fish like that out was very special. Well done, man, Barry. Fish, fish, man. Awesome, man. Nice. Thank you. We've had some epic Dorado fishing, now it's uh, time to fish the Abu Dhabi flats. Absolutely crazy, the fish just come in and charge the plug. Sometimes you just stumble upon a special place, you know. You, you hear about it over drinks at a restaurant and then you have to take a chance and sometimes it pays off. That's the, the beauty of traveling. Your only agenda is to fish. We're on our way to Abu Dhabi. We're going to go and fish a little spot that uh, we've been fishing for the last couple of months. It's actually on the other side of Abu Dhabi near a place called Shahama. And uh, it's actually a channel that's been cut into the, uh, cut into the desert. Uh, we're not sure the, the reason. And there's actually a, a nice salt flat that's formed there. Uh, there's quite a lot of flamingos, a bit of mangroves, but the area that we fish is actually pretty small. Here we are at um, Al Ariam. As you can see behind me is the flats and the channel in the foreground. There's actually a navigable channel. Lots of sheikh's palaces and marinas and stuff along this channel further up. 
and uh, lots of activity. It looks very exciting. There's another huge boil over there. I wound a spoon very fast just now and immediately had a big fish come behind it. So I think with the right kind of with the right kind of uh, lure we're definitely going to get some, some decent fish in here. What do you got Rich? Yeah, we've arrived in Abu Dhabi to our little flat here. Um, as you can see, there's, uh, the water comes up right to the back here. We've got a whole lot of flamingos, a couple of mangroves down here. Um, we actually fish uh, sort of the, the front area of the flat where basically there's a channel that's about three meters deep and it pushes up onto the flat here and then we get a lot of grunter and uh, milkies and golden trevally coming up. So yeah, we're going to try with uh, some small plastics and uh, we've got a couple of fly rods as well and yeah, hopefully we get a, get a few uh, grunter to, for the day. Yeah, flipping amazing. My third one, and that's she's so uh, really nice. I thought, I'm so stoked already. Just, I mean, we've only really been here like 20 minutes. It's already made the trip worthwhile. I got it on a drop shot, eh? Little pill, jerk share. That's amazing. Well, we, I, I, I went over to, um, I went over to Nick just to, to get him to, to take a photo for me, and um, yeah, but we took the photo and we, we released the, the queenie, and um, he just sat here. There's a, there's a little current coming over this little ridge here, and he just sat here, right, right next to us, and just perfect. He just stringing his tail a little bit, letting the water move over his gills. And then when he had recovered sufficiently enough, he just ambled off back into the channel. It was amazing. Really, really cool.
one's got very few spots on it. It's it's different to it's definitely a slightly different fish to the normal javelin grunter. The javelin grunter would have bars, uh -huh. and uh, if it was a cock grunter, it would be no, more the normal grunter shape with this down sloping mouth with lots of freckles on its head, and and actually smaller sort of freckles here. But yeah, very interesting fish. Oh. flamingos in the background and quite a unique place to fish so yeah glad we came to check it out It's a very small flat, so yeah, I guess you could compare it a little bit to the Seychelles, but it's um, got a very different kind of surface in that there's a lot of clay, and so some parts are kind of like muddy, and and then um, the other parts have got the, like these little muscle muscle shells and, and these little stones and sort of rocks. So it goes in your way, that it's not so good. Um, but yeah, it, it's similar in the sense that it's a flat, but the nice thing with here is there's a, there's a big channel which you can always kind of fall back on if you're not seeing anything on the flats. So we haven't have fished much on the flats, only really the, the, the guys with fly rods have. Um, but the, the drop shot and that's been really good in the channel. Yeah. Absolutely mad. I mean, we come right back to literally getting ready to go to just to right, right now where the cars are parked, and it's, it's absolutely gone mad. Birds, fish busting, the wheel spinning. Yeah.
That was great fun. It was a lovely day. It was a lot of fun. So yeah, no complaints, eh? Lovely day. The Abu Dhabi flats are a super, super unique place to fish. Hopefully you'll get to fish it someday soon too.